Welcome to this chapter on the roles of the heads of production and QC and the qualified person. In this chapter, we'll cover what GMP requirements are when it comes to the roles and responsibilities, as well as the specific duties of these three individuals. The main chapter of EU GMP that covers people is chapter two on personnel. This is attached at the attachment section if you would like to refer to it. Within Chapter 2, Clause 2.2, it states that an organisation must have an organisation chart, people must have job descriptions, and there must be no gaps or overlaps in the responsibilities for GMP. It also states at Clause 2.1 that an organisation must have an adequately, adequate number of suitably trained and experienced personnel, with no individual excessively overloaded with responsibilities that can have a negative impact on product quality. This final statement seems to become more of a challenge every year, especially when staff are asked to do more work with less resources. It is still, though, a valid and important requirement of GMP. The three people named on a manufacturing site's manufacturing licence or manufacturing authorisation are the head of production, the head of quality control and the qualified person QP or QPs, as you may have more than one qualified person. GMP and the regulatory authorities prefer these people to be in full-time positions. The head of production and the head of quality control cannot be the same person as Article 11 of the GMP Directive makes it a legal requirement that quality control is independent of production. Within GMP, the duties of all these individuals are described. In small organisations, it may well be that these people actually do all of these tasks themselves, but in larger organisations, then inevitably an increasing amount of delegation will occur. This is permitted by GMP, Clause 2.2 and 2.3, as long as the delegation is to suitably competent and qualified individuals. However, even if this delegation does take place, these three individuals are always ultimately responsible for ensuring that their GMP requirements are done satisfactorily. The duties of the Head of Production are described in Clause 2.5 of Chapter 2. These are as follows. To ensure that products are produced and stored according to the appropriate documentation in order to obtain the required quality. To approve the instructions related to production operations and to ensure their strict implementation. To ensure that the production records are evaluated and signed by an authorised person before they are sent to the quality control department. To check the maintenance of his department, premises and equipment. To ensure that the appropriate validations are done and to ensure that the required initial and continuing training of his uh, departmental personnel is carried out and adapted according to need. I should say that I'm not sure that GMP is deliberately being sexist here. The head of production can of course be male or female. Finally, as the head of production must have a job description, it is always a good idea to check that their job description does actually include these responsibilities. The same is true for the other key personnel who we will describe. The duties of the head of quality control are described in clause 2.6 of chapter 2. These are as follows. To approve or reject, as he sees fit, starting materials, packaging materials and intermediate bulk and finished products to evaluate batch records, to ensure that all necessary testing is carried out, to approve specifications, sampling instructions, test methods and other quality control procedures, to approve and monitor any contract analysis, to check the maintenance of his department, premises and equipment, to ensure that the appropriate validations are done, and to ensure that the required initial and continuing training of his departmental personnel is carried out and adapted according to need. Many of these tasks may not surprise you 
but some might. In GMP, it is the head of production and then the head of quality control who must evaluate batch records. Despite common incorrect assumptions, there is no mention in GMP of a QA manager or department, nor the requirement for a qualified person to review batch records. Of course, the head of QC can delegate this task to a QA manager, most do, and a QP may choose to review batch records if they like. In addition to having their own duties, there are some responsibilities that the head of production and head of quality control must share. These are areas where if you think about it, it makes sense for them to work together and they have a joint interest. These duties are described in clause 2.7 of chapter 2. They are as follows. The authorization of written procedures and other documents, including amendments. The monitoring and control of the manufacturing environment. Plant hygiene process validation, training, the approval and monitoring of suppliers of materials, the approval and monitoring of contract manufacturers, the designation and monitoring of storage conditions for materials and product, the retention of records, the monitoring of compliance with the requirements of GMP and the inspection, investigation and taking of samples in order to monitor factors which may affect product quality. Finally, the duties of the qualified person are described in two places. In the first instance, and written rather legally, the actual hard and fast duties are described in clause 2.4 of chapter 2. They are summarised here. For medicinal products manufactured within the EU, a qualified person must ensure that each batch has been produced and tested or checked in accordance with the directives and the marketing authorization. There are actually two duties described here. Firstly, they must ensure that the batch has been made to EU GMP. And secondly, that the batch has been made according to the conditions described in the product license. If they are satisfied with these two, then the QP will then undertake their third duty which is certify in a register or equivalent document as operations are carried out and before any release that each production batch satisfies this provision. This is what is commonly called batch certification. There is also an additional provision for imported products. For medicinal products manufactured outside the EU, a qualified person must ensure that each imported batch has undergone, in the importing country, the necessary testing. Finally, there is Annex 16 on certification by a qualified person and batch release. This can be seen in the attachment section of this presentation. Within this Annex, are listed the suggested routine duties of a qualified person. Please note this annex is currently being reviewed and is expected to be updated at the end of 2013 or 2014. So these requirements may change. The duties of a QP are summarised as the batch and its manufacturing comply with the provisions of the marketing authorisation. Manufacture has been carried out accordance with GMP. The principal manufacturing and testing processes have been validated. Account has been taken of the actual production conditions and manufacturing records. Any deviations or planned changes in production or quality control have been authorised by the persons responsible in accordance with a defined system. Any changes requiring variation to the marketing or manufacturing authorization have been notified to and authorized by the relevant authority. All the necessary checks and tests have been performed, including any additional sampling, inspection, tests or checks initiated because of deviations or planned changes. All necessary production and quality control documentation has been completed and endorsed by the staff authorized to do so. All audits have been carried out as required by the Quality Assurance System. 
The QP should, in addition, take into account any other factors which he is aware of um, relevant to the quality of the batch. Here you can see that there are a large number of areas where a QP must have assurance that the quality management system is working correctly. GMP does not state they have to physically do all of these tasks. They just need to ensure that they have been done correctly. There is also the need in any quality system to ensure that as well as assigning roles and responsibilities, people also have the authority to do their job. This is very important in GMP. So if the head of QC deems that a raw material does not meet specification, they need to have the authority to reject that material. If a qualified person deems that a batch of product does not meet GMP requirements, they must have the authority not to release the batch. These are examples of cases whereby individual decisions simply cannot be overruled by others. Their authority to do their job correctly depends on it. The importance of authority cascades to many other people within an organisation and, and all personnel, in some way or other, need to have the authority to say yes or no. An engineer maintaining an item of equipment must have the authority to say do not use if they believe that it is unsafe. A supervisor must have the authority to stop someone working in the manufacturing area if they are unwell or if their health could be detrimental to the product. An individual who is not trained to do a job must have the authority to say no if they feel they are not trained sufficiently. So when we look at assigning roles and responsibilities to anyone, we also need to ensure that we give the right authority to the person so they can properly do their job. In the past few slides, we have highlighted the responsibilities of these three key personnel. We will actually go into more detail on the roles and responsibilities of the qualified person in our roles and professional duties of a QP module. For now, it can be seen that in very small organisations, then these individuals may physically do all of these tasks. However, as an organisation grows in size, then delegation of many of these tasks to other individuals is inevitable and GMP allows for this. This is why it is so important in GMP that an organisation must have an organisation chart, people must have job descriptions and there must be no gaps or overlaps in the responsibilities for GMP. Delegation is possible but how this is done needs to be carefully defined. You can't just delegate one day because you can't be bothered. It must be thought through and done in advance. Hence the need for all personnel within an organisation to have job descriptions and responsibilities clearly defined. It is also likely that individuals will have included in their job descriptions additional tasks that are non-GMP related. For example, the head of production is also likely to have responsibilities such as, for example, meeting the planned production schedule, ensuring the safety of staff, performing staff reviews, attendance at various management meetings and so on. Finally, as we said in the previous slide and the previous chapter, it is likely that these personnel, in fact all personnel, will also have non-GMP related roles added to their job description. These may well include meeting business objectives, for example, product made and tested according to the schedule, as well as thinking about the internal customer, getting reports done on time, keeping the facility clean and tidy, monitoring and mentoring staff and so on. It is also likely that non-GMP personnel such as those in finance, customer service and or administration also have job descriptions, training records and are on the organisation chart. A nice example of where a GMP requirement is often extended to other parts of the business. These two ideas are again in line with contemporary QMS thinking as encouraged by ICHQ10 and other documents that we have mentioned.